What separates Taiwanese from Chinese? This political and social argument remains a prevalent topic between Chinese and Taiwanese politicians. Taiwan was a province under the Emperor of the Qing Dynasty. After the Qing collapsed in 1912, the Nationalist Party of China arose as the new government. After 15 years of peaceful governing, the political status of the Nationalist Party was challenged by the Communist Party. The Communist Party quickly acquired support after the performance and strategies during World War II against the invading Japanese army. Under the Chinese Civil War from 1927 to 1950, the Nationalist Party suffered heavy casualties and lost numerous battles. The Nationalist Party in 1949 decided that the war was lost and that the party should retreat back to Taiwan to regroup for future assaults towards China. Little did the officials of the Nationalist Party know that their arrival would trigger one of the most devastating civil disagreements in history. The issue was initiated on February 27, 1949, as native Taiwanese citizens revolted against the strict policies of the newly arrived Chinese Nationalist Party government. On February 27, 1947, a local inspection team investigated an illegal cigarette smuggling case. Little did the civil government in Taiwan know that this investigation would trigger an event with over 20,000 deaths. This minor investigation resulted in strikes, lockouts, and citizen petitions in front of the Taiwan Provincial Executive Office. On February 28, 1947, local citizens gathered in front of the Executive Office, protesting for justice regarding the investigation on February 27. Unexpectedly, the government dispatched soldiers to settle the right, culminating in their opening fire on civilians. The death count on February 28 is uncertain, but historians estimate it to be roughly 10 to 30,000. This incident turned native Taiwanese citizens against the newly arrived Nationalist Party government and planted the seed of disagreement between the people and the government. Taiwanese society was devastated by this incident, and many of the citizens that were arrested or killed in this incident were lawyers, doctors, and other high-level intellectuals that had major impacts on society. Numerous citizens questioned the reasoning and justification of the nationalists' actions because the government executed and arrested citizens without any rational reasons or legal court trials. An entire generation of Taiwanese elites disappeared due to the pressure of the clean village. A series of the Nationalist Party actions were later categorized as the Clean Village Act, which brought an atmosphere of fear and suspicion down upon the country. Although the February 28th Holocaust isn't directly related to the Taiwanese White Terror era, the concept and results were relatively similar. The events of February 28th indirectly led to the beginning of the Taiwanese White Terror era. The 228 incident sent a message towards native citizens about how the government was willing to use military action to suppress local uprisings. The basic definition of a white terror is when part of the government violates its basic responsibilities to protect citizens. Two prominent cases of white terror occurred during the French Revolution and the arrival of China's Nationalist Party in Taiwan. During the 40-year span between 1947 and 1987, tens of thousands of native Taiwanese citizens were arrested or executed. During that time, many innocent citizens were arrested to be interrogated by government officials. The atrocities were committed by the Nationalist Party that fled to Taiwan after they lost control of China to Mao Zedong and the Communist Party. The National Party's fear of spies and local uprisings correlated to communist movements that led to the military suppression on local citizens. The Taiwan White Terror began with the 4-6 events that occurred on April 6, 1949. This event marked the first arresting of publicly gathered students from two different universities and showed the government's suspicion towards public gatherings. Shortly after this event, martial law was passed on May 19, 1949. With the introduction of martial law, citizens were limited in anti-government public gatherings and conversations. This law also prohibited the formation of political parties, making the Nationalist Party the dominating governmental force throughout this entire era and eliminating possibilities of opposition. Violating this law had dire consequences. The execution of the violator could either be on that individual only or the individual's entire family. Harsh ruling and strict political policy towards the Taiwan natives was due to the Nationalist Party's desire for Taiwan to serve as the foundation of a strike against China's communists. Thus, the government couldn't afford for local citizens to incite uprisings nor governmental opposition. The Nationalist Party had four methods that molded Taiwan's social structure into that of their party's Chinese origin. These were coercion, education, the restructuring of social status, and the creation of a new pro-Chinese identity for the indigenous population. 
The height of the White Terror era was between 1949 to 1954. During this time, around 4 to 5 thousand citizens were executed. The total amount of individuals executed from violating this law still remains clouded, but historians estimate it to be tens of thousands. The Taiwanese White Terror era not only psychologically damaged the Taiwanese citizens, but also gave the Taiwanese government a sporadic and detrimental reputation. The psychological damage on citizens still remains years after martial law was lifted and the White Terror era was officially over. The verbal oppression imposed on citizens during that time still remains an unofficial law among citizens years after the White Terror era. Taiwanese citizens continue to fear that conversations about the wrongs of government may lead to long term or permanent imprisonment. <laughs> Hey, 我是在美國, as the government, and myself as a member of a political party, of course we should recognize that we have made mistakes and express our apology to the family members of those harmed in the miscarriages of justice, fabricated legal cases, and misguided. The Taiwanese white terror shook the world and established new boundaries for government's rights and responsibilities. However, this process was long-winded, as the Taiwanese Nationalist Party often avoided the topic. In the aftermath of the fear-inducing decades, President Jiang Jingguo gradually loosened his policies and strict control of the country. On July 15, 1987, Jiang abolished the policy of martial law, allowing Taiwanese citizens to breathe a sigh of relief. Likewise, he and the nationalists permitted Taiwanese civilians to return to and visit China. Jiang's change of heart was further shown in the establishment of the Democratic Progressive Party, a group that opposed his nationalists. In stark contrast with the events of the White Terror, Jiang did not seek to eliminate the Democrats and allow them to prosper. These new policies were enacted right before President Jiang's death. Now, a new era was about to rise, under the rule of Jiang's vice president. Li, Li Denghui was Taiwan's first democratically elected president, and as a result, brought a plethora of new rights and responsibilities to his country's people. Under President Li, the government established the 228 Incident Memorial Foundation. This publicly funded organization sought to provide reparations to families of the white terror victims. However, the first true apology was issued in 1995 by then former President Li Denghui. He gave his speech during the 228 Peace Memorial's establishment in the February 28 Peace Park. This event was tremendously significant due to the fact that the culprits of the white terror were, ne were never brought to legal justice. President Li also declared February 28th a national holiday in honor of the victims who had their rights stripped from them. Today, 228 Day is known as Peace Memorial Day. The Taiwanese government has continued on its path of apology and reparation by holding memorial services, art exhibitions, and other events. Over four decades after the White Terror, Taiwan is now a democratic country. Its people hold far more rights than those previously under the nationalist government. Various reparatory actions have soothed the wounds for some but will never make up for the tragedies caused in 20th century Taiwan. However, the government has largely taken responsibility for its actions. The Taiwanese white terror established precedents for the importance of individual rights and responsibilities.